You might have seen the title of this video as cross canceling doesn't exist and been thinking, wait a second, I've been teaching that for a long time. What does he mean cross canceling doesn't exist? The reality of it is, I think I'm about to show you. It's just a trick. Let's find out why and what's something better we can use. Tell me your thoughts in the comments. I'd love to hear what you're thinking and how you use your own experiences to help teach fractions better, especially multiplying fractions. But let's take a look at why cross canceling doesn't exist. So here's my first example. 4 ninths times 3 eighths, standard fraction multiplication problem. What a lot of teachers will do is say, all right, let's organize this by cross canceling and seeing 4 and 8 go together. So we'll cancel out the 4 and we'll cancel out the 8 and we'll write a 2 in its place. Then we'll do the same thing with the 3 and the 9 and cancel out the 3 and maybe write a 1 there, you know, in case we forgot that placeholder the first time. And then cross out the 9 and write a 3 there. And then we'll look at that and say, okay, children, now it's up to you to determine that this is really one sixth because there's a one here and a one there and a three there and a two there and one times one equals three times two. This visual that we are looking at right now is my main problem with cross canceling and why I really think it doesn't exist and shouldn't exist. The reality of it is we should try this from something that our students have a concept and an understanding of, which is multiplication and the commutative property. So the first version of this instead would be to recognize that this multiplication symbol is really a shortcut for a multiplication of the top and of the bottom, the numerator and the denominator. If we rewrote that instead as four times three over nine times eight, oops there, we'd see pretty quickly that it's still clean, it's still easy to see. Now using our understanding of the commutative property, we can ask kids, hey, can you do something to either the numerator or the denominator or both that might help you organize this in a way that you could understand the problem or simplify it or make it easier for yourself? And that's where their thinking becomes part of the process. And they might leave the four times three on the top and be able to explain to us that they're using the commutative property to rearrange nine times eight as eight times nine. Because when they do that, they are then able to look vertically, which makes perfect sense to them when it comes to simplifying fractions. 4 over 8 is 1 half. 3 over 9 is 1 third. And come up with a final answer of 1 sixth. There's visual clarity to that, and there's conceptual understanding that they can demonstrate through this process. They're not just following a trick of cross-canceling. Try that again. We can look at this as writing the numerator together, 9 times 5, and the denominator, 10 times 12, and potentially looking at that as a way of reorganizing it. Can I rearrange this in some way? Yeah, I sure can. Let's reorganize the numerator this time. 5 times 9 over 10 times 12. And then using their understanding of the vertical fractions they see, 5 tenths is 1 half times 9 twelfths, which is 3 fourths, and they can multiply straight across the numerator and the denominator to get 3 eighths as an answer here. Not only does it make sense, but they can also clearly explain their procedural thinking along the way. What's neat here is that after a while of writing these as full multiplication problems in the numerator and the denominator, they can begin to skip that step and make a few switches right away. They can look at the problem and say, I think the 5 and the 10 should go together because that's a number uh, pair I recognize, and the 9 and the 12 and simply rewrite them in one step, like this. 5 tenths, oops, times 9 twelfths. In that case, they're able to jump to this process and still visually understand that what they've done is create a commutative property of multiplication that has allowed these fractions to be rewritten. They can simplify that to 1 half times 3 fourths, like in the last problem, and get the 3 eighths the same way. Oops. Did it again. Now, the good news about this approach is that by keeping their thinking visible and by keeping their concepts clear, we start to understand how it can be applied later in time when they're talking about algebra. If you look at this one, think about the mess that you would see if students were to circle and cross cancel the 4 and the 12 and 
the y and the y cubed crossing. When you cross a line through a y, now you're looking at x's. And by the way, I'm using red, but a lot of your kids are not using anything other than pencil or pen at the same time. And so instead, let's look at this and have them think it through and reorganize it and make a clear choice. If they do, they should recognize that the 4 goes better with the 12, and the y cubed goes better underneath the y to the first, and rewrite this as 3x squared y over y cubed times 12x over 4. From there, they visually created a situation where simplifying makes sense. This is now y to the first over y to the third, which, depending on how you teach it, I would expect them to recognize as a subtraction problem in the exponents. So 3x squared over y squared times, and then the only thing we can correct in the second fraction is 12 divided by 4, which is 3, and then x over 1. They can then finalize that simply by multiplying the same way they multiply at any fraction. 9x to the third over y squared. So again, it's not that cross-canceling doesn't really exist. I suppose you can say anything exists, but the reality of it is cross-canceling is a trick. And it doesn't allow our students to explain or demonstrate their thinking the way I would want them to. So consider pulling that one out of your teaching repertoire and allowing them to use multiplication and the commutative property instead.